Hi everybody, welcome back to another fragrance review. I've not filmed for a few weeks, I've just been getting on with various things, you know, life gets in the way, I've had some wedding cakes to do, I've had just a lot of work, so I thought I'd just come back and film something really special for you guys. Um, I've not talked about my rose fragrances before. I thought it'd be fun to come on and talk about roses and my favourite rose fragrances and my favourite fragrance note. I love roses, I've always loved roses. They're my favourite flower, they're my favourite perfume note. They're just absolutely beautiful. I love them in every possible way. I'd like to have done a video maybe early on in the year, but it would have been quite a, a short video. I've, I've spent the year having great fun and great times experiencing new perfumes and in, incidentally, obviously, rose perfumes, but not just rose. Obviously, there are lots of notes to, to explore and have fun with. But up until this point, I've now got a really lovely selection and a collection of rose fragrances. So I'm really excited to share them with you and talk about how I feel about each of the scents. I hopped onto Google just to get a little bit of kind of background information and a little bit of history about the rose. Because I'm not really, I don't really uh, have much information actually other than the fact that I just really love roses and I love painting them and I just love how they look and obviously the smell is just divine. So I thought it would be nice to kind of give you a bit of a background and, and a little bit of history. Yeah. Um, roses have been a long and colourful history. They have been symbols of love, beauty, war and politics. And incidentally politics, during the 15th century, <clears throat> the rose was a symbol for the factions fighting to control England. The white rose symbolised York, the red rose symbolised Lancaster. As a result, the conflict became known as the War of the Roses. And the Perfume Society has also got a, a sort of a nice... Um, brief look into roses here as well. It says the fragrance or a fragrance without roses is almost as unthinkable as a love affair without kisses. Not only are roses the most romantic of flowers to look at, they're an absolute cornerstone of perfumery. The rose most commonly used in perfumery are the to Turkish rose, the Damask rose and the rose scented floor fo folia, also known as the rose de mar or rose de may. 170 flowers are said to relinquish but a single drop of precious rose oil. So that's pretty astounding actually and it kind of it is so interesting how this rose has been a symbol of all those things for so many years. So another reason just to absolutely appreciate and, and respect this absolutely beautiful flower. So why don't we just get started on the fragrances so we can get this video going because I've got a high feeling it's going to be long but I really will try my hardest to keep it as short as possible. So my first rose fragrance to show you is Coach EDP by Coach. There's a lot of flankers in this line but this is the original Coach scent. It's a very easy, easy scent, rose scent. This is a, this is a an instant like. There's nothing offensive, there's nothing to dislike about this one. It's a really pretty clean, easy-going, feminine, soapy kind of a fragrance. Raspberry leaf, Turkish rose and suede, they're the, they're the main notes that I can really smell in this perfume. It's such an easy-going fragrance. Again, it's just light. It's very, very easy to wear. It's, it's kind of like an out-of-the-shower kind of a fragrance. The rose is quite light in here. I, I would say that it's probably more raspberry, but Rose is still a, is a, is a heavy note in this. I think raspberry comes forward slightly more than the rose. Um, very, very sort of delicate. It's a delicate, sweet, easy wearing, soapy fragrance. Easily a, light, a blind buy. This is a very safe one to, to buy for as a gift or something. I think this is one that it's just anyone could like this fragrance. It's very, very pretty. Yeah, just a delicate, sweet floral rose fragrance. There's no particular order with these fragrances, but, I, but roughly I think I'll do them sort of from light to heavy. So my next fragrance is Stella, classic Stella. I really love this fragrance. This is probably my oldest rose fragrance I have. Really pretty, not too strong, not too weak. Um, it's definitely rose dominant. Um, I can smell the, there's a sweetness in here as well. I think there could be raspberry in this, but I'm not sure. Um, there's a sweetness in here. It's it's one I get compliments with. It's, how would I class this? It's a, just a classic, a classic rose, you know. It's just a, there's a bit of a sort of earthy undertone to it. But there's enough sweetness that it's kind of bright. And it's just, just my classic rose. I absolutely love this. I think this is probably... 
if I had to have one rose fragrance, I think I'd have to go for my, my Stella because it's just, it's the one that I'll always feel at home with. It's just, it's my classic, classic rose. And I absolutely love, love Stella. And yeah, it's, it's, there's a sparkling quality to it. It's very bright, but it's still anchored with the, this kind of, perhaps it's the amber, something that's keeping it really, really, you know, grounded. It's just a really beautifully rounded fragrance. So yeah, that's Stella EDP by Stella McCartney. So next up we have a really pretty rose. This is by Christian Dior Privé. This is so flipping huge that I can't even fit it in the screen, but I'll do my best. I do keep certain fragrances in their boxes. I think it's good to keep them contained and it, it keeps them, you know, protected. And if you ever sell a fragrance, it's always better with the box. And it's just nice to, to keep it in the box, really. Um, Rose Gypsy, this is a whopping, what size is this? I think this is the 250ml. I'm never going to, well, I've, I might get through it. It's a very easy, easy, easy one to wear. So it's one that you can go very liberally on. And I'm sure once the summer, spring, summer comes back around again, I'll probably start spraying this quite quite heavily. So this is Joe's Gypsy. This is a watery, very, very light rose fragrance. The main notes to my nose are the rose. In particular, this is a rose de May. Uh, green notes and dew drops. That pretty much sums up this fragrance. It's very watery. It's very ethereal. It's very, very easy wearing. It's like rose water pretty much with a nice green element to it which makes it beautiful for spring and the summer um quite linear just really lovely if you don't like loud fragrances and you love your rose you want something very pretty and very delicate this is just absolutely perfect for that a really really pretty pretty rose fragrance light clean easy to wear rose gypsy so keeping with the clean green rose vibe next we have flora botanica by balenciaga i absolutely love the packaging on this it's just so arty and oh, i just love it clean and crisp and funky and whimsical so so beautiful this is such an original fragrance i absolutely love this i didn't love it at first for some reason i think it's because i was trying to wear it in the summer and in the summer i my, my nose and my head is very, very different to how it appreciates fragrances in the colder months. First time I wore this in the summer, I got a really nasty headache. And I think it was just that I sprayed it quite liberally, thinking it would be very, very, very light. Um, it was a hot day and it just I think it was just bad timing. And the whole association, I just couldn't wear it for quite some time afterwards. And then I sprayed it again when I was in a department store. The bottle drew me in. Very intriguing, beautiful bottle drew me in and I just suddenly loved it. It was great. I thought, oh my God, I, I can wear this. I really wanted to wear this fragrance and I was just so disappointed that it was association was with a headache and then for some reason it just, it, that went away and I ended up absolutely loving it. And it's it's just a really green, fresh, beautiful fragrance that is really for any time of the year. But just for me personally, it, it, it's, I can't wear it in a very hot Hot environment it's just probably the end of summer and then moving on to sort of slightly cooler months um, the main notes to my nose for this one is the rose there's mint and also there's carnation here they're kind of the main ones um, the mint certainly brings a beautiful freshness to this it's crisp and clean there's no aldehydes listed but whatever notes are in here give me that aldehylic aldehylic is that a word I don't know it well anyway <laughs> aldehylic vibe but not in a bad way, in a way green, green rosy, like like if you had roses in, in a greenhouse and lots of other greenery happening in there and it's just really bright, you just watered everything. That's the kind of fragrance to expect from Flora Botanica. And it really is a beautiful one, not like anything else at all. And I highly recommend it, really, really pretty. So next, another from the Christine Dior Privé line. I've mentioned this on my on other channels on other videos even as before um this is le col noir and i've compared it to rose gypsy as well but it is it is different it's 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 different enough that you can just justify having both of them for sure this one is far more fruity and far sweeter than rose gypsy this is the 125 mil and i need to focus is it focused 
think it's all gone blurry. There we go, that's better. So the main notes to my nose in here are the rose, the peony and the musk. This is a, just a really sweet, no it's not really sweet, it's, but it's sweet, it's not really really sweet. It's a, a sweetish pink rose fragrance. Yeah, there's something in this that reminds me of Stella. It's, whether it's the same rose or the same strength of rose, there's something very similar in these two, only this one is a much more watery, um, more delicate, much more delicate, easy wearing fragrance. This is one that you could apply quite liberally, but just smell really pretty, really feminine. Um, there's something quite fruity in here like a delicate fruit that's just kind of swimming around this really pretty rose but it's basically just a really pretty clean and slightly bright delicate but fruity rose really really beautiful and yeah once the summer comes around again in the spring i'm be reaching for this one and yeah lo absolutely love love that one as well but let's just move on to another absolutely beautiful rose fragrance so this is dancing roses by victor and rolf this has got a full review on my channel i can't get it in the frame so let's just take it out okay lovely quality bottle as well nice and heavy really love this fragrance i've actually um given my friends some decants of that which um you know it's like it's like my treasure i don't want to give any more but it's, I don't mind actually, it's nice because people get to experience fragrances as well and it's nice to smell on other people and see how it comes over. But on my friend, I smelt it and I always know when she's wearing it, I smell it instantly. It's just such a bright, fun and sparkling, just gorgeous rose fragrance. It, this one, the main notes to my nose on this one is probably the cherry brandy, the rose and the lychee. The rose isn't the main note here, I would say, as much as it's called Dancing Roses, and you do smell the rose in here, but it's the, it's the cherry brandy and the lychee that really kind of come forward, and they kind of give you this really bright, fun, fruity, playful, um, yeah, kind of fragrance. So the rose is more, I would say, let me just... The rose is tame. It's the tame part. It's the smooth part of this. Oh, God, it's so lovely. I've got to smell it again. Oh, my God, it's so gorgeous. Um... Yeah, so I'll describe this as a, a sweet, bright, boozy, sparkling scent. The, the rose is, the, is smooth and pretty. It's like almost like a sourness in this. But could, you could almost call it like a rhubarb note, but it's not. It's the, it's the lychee. It's kind of a... Or maybe it's a cherry. Maybe it's a sour cherry brandy situation happening here. It's a whole load of sparkle and, and, and brightness and just, oh, it's just so gorgeous. Definitely love at first sniff. Everyone that smells this loves it instantly. It's something you would wear to a party or feeling, you know, really fun and excited about something and just want to be noticed. And yeah, it's just absolutely stunning and can't say enough good things about it. So if you get a chance, check this one out, but it is beautiful. So just making room for the next one, we have a Mancera. This is Roses and Chocolate. This is a really fun, easy to wear fragrance. So the main notes in this fragrance to my nose are dark chocolate, rose and vanilla. It is a very light, fun, easy scent to wear. It's kind of like a, a sort of soapy, has a soapy quality to this. Um, it's not for everyone. I think it, it can be described as being quite synthetic, and I, I would have to agree with that. It does have a, quite a synthetic, chocolatey kind of a scent. It is dark chocolate, but it's powdery. It's a powdery kind of chocolate, and a, a, a kind of soapy. Like I think I've described before, but this is, if you can imagine a soap smelling of chocolate and rose, really this is what this is. It comes down to being this kind of soapy scent. It's not a very heavy scent. The chocolate isn't heavy, the rose isn't heavy. They kind of dance around and play off of each other a bit. They're not completely blended, but I find that quite nice. It's kind of a playful, very, very sort of easy wearing. Like I say, it's slightly powdery. There's a powderiness to this. And I like wearing it in the evenings. Um, any time of the year, I think this would work, to be honest. It's not very heavy. 
I just really like it. Something about it, I just find it really unusual and it's not like anything else I own and it's I really enjoy it. I just sprayed it actually, <laughs> went up my nose. This is a really weird thing to say, I don't want to put you off, but if you can imagine um, a nutty chocolate with a bit of um, washing up liquid. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a really weird thing to try and describe. You have to get your nose on it and see how it works for you. But I, I really do like this one. My next fragrance is so pretty. This is Delina by Papam de Mali. Oh, it's so beautiful. I just love this fragrance. I know it's talked about a lot on YouTube. And for good reason, it really is just the most pretty, feminine, beautiful fragrance. The main notes here are Turkish Rose, Peony lychee and rhubarb it's a i've described it before as being a fairy tale in a bottle it, it just kind of is it's like this happy ever after in a bottle it's something so it's something so perfect about delina it's sensual smooth very luxurious very expensive smelling it's a special occasion scent but again wear it anytime if you love it just wear it but i kind of save it up for Probably date night, something romantic, something special with my husband. It's elegant, it's sexy. I have compared this to Dancing Roses. There's some similarities in the notes in how it, it sits. There's a sharpness, a bitterness, which I think well, obviously in this one it is the rhubarb. There's also a sharing note of lychee in both of them. That could be, you know, what, what is what is compared with, you know, pairing them up. Um, pairing them up doesn't make sense. It's linking them. <laughs> Um, but compared to Dancing Roses, this is softer, it's more powdery, it's smoother, it's more luxurious, and it's just divine. If love had a fragrance, it would be Delina. It's just that pretty and that perfect. Okay, so next we have, from Italia Colognes, we have Rose. Oh, look at neck, hang on. Anonym. I think I always say this wrong. I'm probably butchering it. I'm sorry. There you go. This is going in a completely different direction to all these other roses. All these other roses, I would say, were kind of a bit romantic, sweet, feminine, you know, smooth, that kind of thing. This is this is nothing like that. This is a peppery, earthy, slightly spicy rose. It's the main notes in here are rose. Ginger, well, the ones that at least you know stand out to me: rose, ginger, and oud. And if there's no pepper in this, apparently, but it really is peppery. It's a peppery rose. I do really love this. I haven't worn this a lot yet because I don't know. I just haven't really reached for it too much. It's quite strong on my skin. It does sit quite strong. Um, but I like to layer it. If I've got a really delicate fragrance, perhaps that needs a little bit more of a lift. That's one that I'd pair it with because you get just enough rose, but it's a rose that kind of underpins everything. It's not a bright rose. It's not a um, a delicate rose. It's not one that sort of floats around at the top. It's one that sits underneath and, and it's got this pepperiness around it. And it's lovely. It's got a kind of Eastern vibe to it. And it's nice to have something that's a little bit different in my rose collection. So this is a really nice one that, that I can... It's nice for colder months because obviously it's a bit heavier. And it sits a little bit more dry than the rest of them as well. It's not as feminine as the others. Again, you know, when I talk about femininity, I'm just talking about the conventional aspect of it. It's not conventionally feminine. Anything can be worn by anyone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a unisex scent. It can it, it, it sit beautifully on anyone. Um, but yeah, it's just a really nice, new, different take on a rose. So my next fragrance is one, it's actually my least favorite. Um, I haven't really worn this a lot and I don't think I like it on my skin. I'm going to be completely honest. I might, I might actually sell this one. Um, this is by James, Elizabeth and James and it's the Nirvana line. I have the two others in this line and I love the bottles. I just love the bottles and I just went on a bit of a purchasing craze and just bought a load of things and this is one of the ones I bought in a bundle. And it's, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just not for me. Maybe I like things that are much sweeter or more whimsical or brighter. But this is a... I'm knocking everything. Hang on. This is a dry, basic 
rose. And I think this would be lovely on a man, personally. I think this would be a beautiful rose fragrance for a man. Um, you know, it's, I love these bottles. I love, <laughs> I like feeling them up. I know I loved how they feel. They're so um, textured and it's a sensory thing, I guess. I love the thing. It's supposed to look like a, an old cigarette box. That's kind of the design point on these. I've got um, the bourbon and I've got the black. That's the Nirvana bourbon, Nirvana black. This is the Nirvana rose, which I thought I would love the most, but there you go, you never know. Um, love the bottle, but in terms of the juice, it's just not my favorite. Um, it only has three notes, and those are rose, obviously. Hang on, my, my page has turned. Here we are. Rose, geranium, and vetiver. It's a very dark, dry rose that's been in a vase and it's died, and you're just getting that sort of after smell, that after smell of the roses. It's not stagnant, but it's as if you've got these old roses that are drying and you've got a bit of pepper on them and a bit of dust, and there's something slightly sharp as well in there. I think I need to give it more time perhaps, but it just seems to dry down just to something even drier and even darker and even more not very exciting really um yeah but i do love the bottle <laughs> so that is nirvana black obviously if you've got this one you love it that's fantastic but obviously we're all different and we all have different ways of smelling things and how they sit on us so yeah unfortunately it's not one that's working for me so my next rose fragrance is the most unusual fragrance in my entire fragrance collection i didn't think i'd ever own it but there you go um i had a decant of this i dropped it i didn't like i wasn't sure if i liked it i dropped it on the floor and the smell i had in my bedroom for days and days was absolutely beautiful and i couldn't understand how i hadn't realized how beautiful it was and it made me buy a bottle and it is the oud satin mood by maison france's code Chan. Um, yeah, this is this is a really unusual fragrance. Um, it is a rose fragrance. The main notes to my nose are the rose, the oud, and the violet. And I think it's the violet in here that makes it slightly unusual, and that the oud in here is a very medicinal oud. It's a very strong medicinal oud, which, if I'm honest, still doesn't smell right on my skin. It just smells slightly rubbery and just very medicinal. There's not enough sweetness to to kind of balance this out and, and bring forward the rose. The reason why I do in fact love it and I've stayed with it is because it smells divine on my clothes. Now, the fact that this smelled beautiful when I dropped it on my, in my, on my floor and smells beautiful on my clothes, there you go. It, it obviously doesn't work with my skin chemistry. But on everything else, it's heaven. It is probably the most luxurious, posh, expensive smelling fragrance that I actually own. So I'll describe this as a dark, gothic, sensual rose. It's, oh, it just smells so expensive. It smells posh and it smells just like absolute luxury. It's not a sweet fragrance. It is incredibly loud. It does project like hell. Um, it will get you noticed for sure. It's velvety. It's a velvety rose. The oud is completely wrapped around the rose. The, the violet in this is what I find interesting. It, you've got that kind of lovely powdery purple per flower notes in here, which kind of gives it a bit of a whimsy, a bit of a whimsical um, feel to it. And... It is lovely, it is incredibly beautiful, and although I won't wear it often, um, when I do wear it, it will be when I'm in a, in a mood, in, a, in the right mood, and it will be noticeable, and it will be when I'm feeling, you know, confident, and I want to stand out, and yeah, it's slightly empowering, it's an empowering kind of a fragrance. If a, if a, a dark blue rose had a scent, it would be this, and... Um, yeah, I, it is beautiful. It is, and I'm, I'm happy, really happy to have it. It's nice to have a rose that goes in another direction once again, you know. Next up is another rose fragrance that's mentioned quite a lot on YouTube. It's by Maison Lancome, and it is Oud Bouquet. 
and it, it it deserves a lot of mentioning i mean this is such an amazing fragrance it's got a lot of personality and yeah it's just absolutely beautiful again i keep it in the box because some perfumes are just worth keeping in the box so this is actually the original packaging this has been reformulated now and it has the newer packaging um the new packaging is absolutely beautiful but i kind of like this 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 bottle as well it's really beautiful um i think the new one came out last year 2018 and as far as i know they 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 still smell pretty much the same apparently the new formulation is slightly sweeter and has slightly less oud i could be wrong i think i've heard people say that but i've not smelled the new one so i, I you know i'm not sure but that's just what i've heard so oud bouquet um this is my first experience ever of smelling oud and it is beautiful it's a very sweet oud i appreciate that so it probably was a good first oud fragrance to try um it was my first very loud and very very strong fragrance it's probably the aside from oud satin mood it's probably the strongest and most projecting rose fragrance that i have the main notes in here are praline oud and rose it is very sweet that praline note is really beautiful yeah it's decadent it's a decadent uh, uh, praline it's a decadent gourmand it's um it's just so beautiful it has so much character it really does this this will get you noticed if you're wearing this you will be noticed i've received so many compliments from wearing this fresh fragrance um, my sister is always trying to steal it from me she absolutely loves it um she goes ham on this when she takes it from me she covers herself in it and I say to her Vic you know calm down people do have to smell you you know it's not just you <laughs> in the room this is a fragrance that I would wear when I'm not feeling like myself I'm not someone who usually wears really strong fragrances this is one if I want to feel when I go out I want to be noticed I want to feel sexy I want to feel you know confident and just yeah it really does enhance that kind of a mood for some reason I just think of Christmas when I think of this when I wear this smell I just think of something that's just it's got so much depth, it's very festive, it's very rich, it's a really rich sort of, yeah, really just lovely, lovely gourmand, rich gourmand. The oud is really sweet, the rose is really smooth. If I was to colour this perfume, if this had a colour, it would be the colour of these roses, just a really deep, ready, lovely, you know, romantic, sexy kind of a colour. Yeah, it's, I really love this. Okay, so I've just got three more to go, and then we're done. I didn't realise how many rose fragrances I had. <laughs> um, so next up, we have a fragrance that's actually from the same house as... Um, it's Lancome, it's the Maison Lancome line. It's the new packaging, so you get to see the packaging. But this is the Roses Berberanza. Man, this is sweet. This is sweet, sweet, sweet stuff. This is... Yeah, this is lovely. Oh, my God, I just love this fragrance so much. This gets me compliments, and... I've absolutely fallen in love with it. So this is, um, the main notes in here are the rose, honey. Oh no, I'm reading the wrong one. <laughs> Hang on. I seem to have left this one out when writing all my notes. So I don't have my notes in front of me. So I can't tell you the notes that I can smell other than what I try and remember. Rose, of course. Pistachio is a very, very strong note in here. And, oh, what else was there in here? How frustrating. Okay, so basically how it smells is sweet, jammy, fruity rose, but rose that is just so bright and so strong and so, so, so sweet. This is a rose that's just completely sugar-coated and it's kind of swimming in a fruity fruit juice, like a tropical fruit juice. Um, despite being fruity, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a summery fragrance it's very strong and it's very um deep but it's fruity that gives it the kind of brightness and the loudness it's color it's a colorful scent i don't know how if you could if the rainbow was a was a fragrance it would be this because there's so much happening here there's so many different colors in this that's my cat flap sorry about that um yeah this gets me compliments this gets noticed whenever i wear this um people ask me what i'm wearing and on me the rose dominates it's the rose that really does come up to the fore come up forward and, and sits you know most noticeably um the pistachio in here i'm not familiar with pistachio but it just gives it this lovely 
funkiness. Um, kind of like a, hang on. Yeah, like a sour, oh, it's a hard one to describe. It's a funky, yeah, the, the funkiness, the best way I can describe it is if the fruit has been sitting for ages and it's starting to ferment, it's starting to over sugar and it's almost hurting your teeth. It's, it's so sweet that it's, you know, it's, it's going over, like, you know, the sugars are coming out and it's just, it's an overload of sugar. That, that's kind of the funkiness that you get in this. And I don't know if it works for everyone. I've heard people, you know, it can be a hit and miss, but for me anyway, I love this. This is currently my most, one I've worn the most, most worn fragrance of rose so far this season anyway. Um, yeah, it makes me feel happy. It's impossible to be fed up and miserable wearing this fragrance because it's, it's so loud and it's so bright and it's fun. It's just beautiful. Okay, we're getting there. So two more left. So my next one is one of my latest um, purchases and it's, yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful rose. So this is one by Guerlain. This is my first ever Guerlain fragrance and it's a really special one as well. This is Rose's, no, this is Rose Barbare. Um, I bought, you can see there's quite a bit already gone. That is because I bought this second hand. Um, it's not a cheap fragrance and I think I was quite lucky to come by this. Somebody was, um, it was on a, an auction, but it was on a charity auction on eBay. And I won it because, yeah, I mean, I was determined to get this thing and I was so excited to get it. And all the money went to charity, which is a children's charity. So that was great. That was fantastic. And it made it extra special. And, and yeah, and the actual, for the fragrance itself, the main notes are rose, honey and, and aldehydes. Um, I don't really like honey-based fragrances. For some reason, they just don't seem to work with me. But this one is just incredibly special. This one is smooth and sensual and so luxurious so rose barbet is part of the the speciality girl online called the, the arts and materials line this one is is creamy it's a creamy rose it's a mature rose um this is not a young fragrance this one it's it's got a vintage vibe about it it has a, a girl on kind of vibe i have smelt a few girl on i haven't had a chance to own any yet. There's a certain a DNA in Guerlain that I think kind of runs through quite a few fragrances and I pick it up in this particular fragrance. Um, you can definitely pick up the aldehydes in this. It gives it a kind of brightness, although it isn't a bright fragrance. It's, it's just a creamy, velvety, luxurious rose that has just enough brightness that keeps it interesting. You know, it's just a tiny little bit of sparkle that I would picture a lady of the manor wearing. A really um, feminine, confident, slightly more mature lady wearing because it's just something about it that's just a lady know who knows who she is when she wears this, you know. It, it's rose, but it's serious. It's taking itself quite seriously. Um, but it's more of a winter, winter rose, I think. It's quite a rich rich kind of a rose although it's quite smooth and not too complex there's still a quite a depth of rose in this you know it's just a really well made fragrance i think and yeah so that is roses no i keep saying roses that is rose barbera there you go such a beautiful classy bottle as well okay Okay, so we've got one left. What can it possibly be? It just goes to show how rose is just, you know, can go so many different directions. It's so versatile and it can be it can be played out in different months and different different moods and different characters. I mean I've got spicy kind of eastern vibes, you've got more romantic kind of vibes, you've got the clean green fresh vibes, kind of more luxury, creamy vibes, really sweet, playful, you know. And you've got the gothic deep dark one. And actually my last one kind of sits in the same, in, in a gothic way, nothing like that at all. Nothing, nothing at all like that. My last fragrance is Tom Ford's Noir Deep Noir. This is my latest purchase. And obviously, as you can see, I haven't even opened it yet. I was saving it up to open for you guys. So I've been really excited to do that. And that's why I left it till last. So I've been really excited to get into this thing. So. I've been wanting to get this one for absolutely ages. I had a sample of this all year. And the reason I didn't go for it was because this is a fragrance that just 
comes to life in the colder months. I can't appreciate this while it was warm. And I think I know why. There's a note in here which um, it's not my favourite, but having tested it out enough, I know that that note doesn't always stay. And yeah, it's I do love this. This is a gothic rose. This is a dark, deep, beautiful fragrance. What I love about this one is the note of truffle. It really does take it in another direction. So let me just spray this just so I can remind myself. Because it's... So one of the things that I wasn't sure about with this fragrance was the patchouli. The three main notes really that come, come to life in this is the rose, patchouli and the truffle. So the rose in here comes forward as quite a dry, earthy rose. And that is because of the the truffle, I think. This is because of the, the patchouli and the truffle. It really dries it out and makes it very dark and kind of dusty. There's a sort of, I don't know if there's chocolate in here. I'm looking at, I'm, I'm going by Fragrantica, which probably isn't always the best thing because it's not always accurate. It doesn't actually list chocolate, but I'm sure I've heard people talk, talk about chocolate being in this fragrance. But I can smell chocolate in this. Whether it is in there or not, I can smell it. And that gives it a slightly creamy sweetness. Not too much, but just enough so that it's got a bit of lift and a bit of brightness. Overall, it's a deep, dark, gothic rose. I actually did do a review on this on Fragrantica, and I described it as being, if a Phantom of the Opera wore a fragrance, it would be this. This is something I can imagine the opera house, or the, you know, the deep areas beneath the opera house smelling like, with those roses that are very, you get that single rose with the black velvet ribbon around it, and you get that whole mysterious, kind of atmosphere. This is this is what this fragrance is to me. But romantic atmosphere. That's this. This is a dark gothic romance. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So that perfume actually completes my rose collection to present to you all. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you have uh, it's been helpful for anyone looking for a rose fragrance. If you want something that's the, probably the most photo realistic thing a rose fragrance whoops is I would say probably the Rose Gypsy. It's very light, it's very watery, but it does give you that straightforward, pretty rose. And actually Stella, out of all of these, I think Stella still does give you a beautiful rose and it still has its place, you know, and it still does really well in the collection. And I think this, again, this is more of a simple rose, but again, more luxurious and simple and clean. So what rose fragrances do you have in your collection? I'd love to know what your favorite rose fragrance is and which of these sound appealing to you? Which type of rose do you tend to look for in a fragrance? So that's it, I will leave you there. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I shall see you all again soon on my next one. Take care, bye.